welcome to the Firehouse Roundtable podcast brought to you by the Ventura Fire Foundation. I'm one of your hosts, Peter McKenzie, retired fire captain with the City of Ventura Fire Department, and my co-host, Jason Kay, active battalion chief with the City of Ventura Fire Department. We are going to bring awareness to real issues that face firefighters and their families. We want you to feel like you have a seat at the kitchen table, which every firefighter knows is the heart of the firehouse. Let's get right into the episode. All right, welcome to another episode of the Firehouse Roundtable. Uh, today, I'm going solo, so Jason's not here. He's had some other things going on. But today we have Brian Waters, who's a captain with the L.A. County Fire Department. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk to uh, some guys from my fellow uh, department with I'm sure most of the guys from my department are tired of talking to me, so it's always good. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I assume you're that guy in, at the department that always wants to talk about real estate and rentals and everything to do with your finance. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, I know there's always one of them, but I've uh, I've become that guy. Sometimes I have to be careful that I'm not talking about it too much, but nowadays it's almost like people reach out to to hear about the yeah. subject. So it's uh, yeah, I was it's, uh, it's fun. I was one of those guys. We had a couple in our departments, but, um, which I mean, heck, that's why we're here. Cause th- th- I want to talk about that stuff. I think it's, I think it's important and I think it needs to be talked about more and we'll get into all that stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about how we, how we crossed paths the first time. So, um, what's the name of the Facebook group fire, uh, it's first responders, uh, first responders, financial, financial freedom. freedom. Yeah. So I saw you in there. Did you go on that podcast? I did. Yes, they had me on. Okay. It was really awesome. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. So I went on that podcast as well. I think I don't remember. Anyway, so I came across you and I saw what you or I listened to the podcast and you were talking about all the things that I'm passionate about. And that is, you know, there's the fire department's great job, provides a great lifestyle for people, takes families, vacations, houses, that type of stuff. But you're, you're I mean, you're you're basically an industrial athlete, like go blow your hip out, Mm -hmm. go, you know, shatter your knee. And if you can't come back, you're kind of screwed. Right. So there's a lot of risk in having all your eggs in one basket from a financial perspective. Like if everything you have comes from your fire department income, to me, that's a very uncomfortable place to be because we've all seen guys on the job that get injured and they're gone. Now they're not walking out the door with nothing, but you know, it's not the same, you know, if they have on some sort of disability retirement or something, it's it's definitely not what it is. You know, it's not going to provide for you for the rest of your life, for for the most part. Anyhow, we, we're diving straight into this topic, and I kind of just glaze right over who you are and introduce you to our listeners. So let's back up a let's back up a, a step or two before you answer some of those questions. But tell tell our listeners about you, and I apologize for yeah, no problem, no problem. Rolling right I, know, into I, it. I tend to do that. I'll, I'll walk up to strangers and just say, "Hey, do you want to talk about real estate?" Before I introduce myself, so I tell yeah. you. Um, But yeah, thank you guys for having me on again. My name is Brian Waters. I'm a a captain at LA County Fire Department. Been on there for 13 years. I live in Huntington Beach. I'm married to um, my wife, Yvonne, who I've met uh, when I was a freshman in high school. We have twin boys that are, gosh, they're now 11 years old. And um, yeah, I've moved around a little bit throughout my life, but always kind of came back to to my hometown of Huntington. And and, uh, I love being here. I love my department and I love real estate. So yeah, so I was re- I was reading your bio. It sounds like you took kind of a weird path to the fire department. I mean, not not that often that we find a a medevac pilot who later became an airline pilot who then became a firefighter. So let's, tell us that story if you don't mind. Yeah, and, and it's kind of a good segue to the question we're later going to come across, which is like, why did, do I get into real estate? And it's it's this very similar thing that, that happened to me when I was uh, transitioning from from being a pilot to, to being a firefighter. So, uh, my mom worked for United airlines. And so my whole, my whole life, I always travel with her. I thought it was the coolest thing. You know, I would travel on planes with her. I thought that jet setting lifestyle was, was going to be the coolest thing that you see. Every boy wants to be a, a fireman or a pilot. Right. So mm-hmm. I figured I'd try them both, you know? Um, but, uh, when I, so I, I went to school in Santa Barbara, kind of up by, up by you guys there. And when I, uh, when I graduated, I became a, um, a instructor. And then after that, I had an opportunity to move to Hawaii and I became a medevac pilot flying out there. So that was kind of my first taste of the fire service, really. 
because I'd be flying and I would be looking back over my shoulder while they're working up some patient behind us that we're transporting from the outer islands over to the trauma center in Oahu. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it was really exciting. Number one, I, I got to do both. So I was fl- flying the plane, but I got to look and be part of the whole crew that, that dealt with that stuff. Um, later had the opportunity to fill my childhood dream of being a pilot. Um, I got to work for SkyWest Airlines flying jets. Um, and it was a pretty tough lifestyle, to be honest. I was uh, living in and out of hotel rooms, and I was living in uh, California based in Chicago. And this was pre-kids, but you know, we think we have it bad as uh, when we get recalled or mandatory for our, our job, man, you're gone a lot um, in the airlines. And so right around the time that um, or the year I got hired, it was the best year in the history to get hired. All the Vietnam uh, baby boomer guys were leaving. It was just a floodgate of open jobs. And then the FAA decided to come up with a mandatory, uh, there used to be a mandatory retirement age of, of 60. They changed it to 65. And so what that did is it parlayed everyone retiring for five years. So I was literally like, imagine being on probation at the worst firehouse, getting hammered every single day on calls for five years and you're just the rookie. And, and that was me. That was me. So about three years into that, I actually got, um, I got laid off for a year. And so, you know, it was a very humbling experience for me. I I went from flying jets to, you know, I have no plan. Luckily my amazing wife, Yvonne, she took care of me and she, uh, she had a good job and she was supporting me, but I, you know, just like, just like all the firefighters, you know, we're not going to just going to sit there and, and cry about it. We got to figure something out. So I, I went to a, a fire academy. I went from flying jets to making eight bucks an hour on an ambulance, just any means necessary to support myself and my wife, because that's, that's who we are. Um, that turned out to be the biggest blessing in disguise, because at that point I re- really was opened up to what the fire service was about. I started testing, tested all over. And partially, I think because of the background I had, uh, at least for the interviewers, it was an interesting background for a young guy that, that I had. And so, um, you know, I got hired at LA County and I actually went back to the airlines because the process is so long. And they said, uh, they later offered me the job. I had to make the the choice. Do I keep my job as a pilot or do I, uh, become a fireman? And I just completely jump ship, jump the cannonball into the deep end. And I'm like super grateful. And, you know, sometimes those, those, uh, those knockdowns in life are the best things that ever happened to you. So that's how I absolutely, how absolutely. I, I think sometimes when you get beat up a little, it, it might suck in the moment, but there's yeah. always some growth to be had, some lessons to be learned. So absolutely. yeah, that's an interesting story. I, th- so my, I've got three kids and I was at some school function and one of the dads was an airline pilot. Uh, and I go, you might be the only profession that, uh, kids think is, you know, is cooler than firefighters. And we got a good chuckle out of that. But when you said whatever, boy, want to be a pilot or a fireman, yeah. that's, they, that's, that rings true for sure. Um, well, interesting. So then how did that turn into real estate? Well, um, I've, I always, so I, I grew up with my dad investing in real estate and not like a major investor. He just had some rentals and stuff. And so, um, I don't know, I guess the, most of the people you talk to, uh, that are doing pretty well in, in their finances, it, it's a common denominator. You know, most of them are going to say, "Oh, I I hit it big, um, put it on red at the roulette table, or I did crypto and all that different stuff." And I'm not saying any of those are, are bad things. I just don't personally do them. But um, I had a goal by the age of 40 that I wanted to have my first rental property, and so um, so I just kind of started to to look into it. And um, the the weird way the the world's connected is my, the first rental property I ever bought was, uh, in Marietta. And the, the realtor was a friend of mine who was linked to another fireman. And the house I bought was a fire from a re, a guy that was worked for Corona that was retiring and moving back East. And so it was kind of like an under the table type of deal, but it was mm-hmm. three firemen making a, a deal to kick off my <laughs> journey, which is ironic. I think, um, the guy's house was absolutely immaculate. I mean, he was that engineer that probably, you know, waxed underneath the rig twice a day. Mm-hmm. And so, um, it was kind of a, for my first experience, it was almost like this alternate reality of, uh, still to this day, it's the best rental I have. It's a beautiful place. I don't even want to jinx myself, but it's, it's been great. Yeah. So um, how did, so how did you go from, you know, how did you go all in on real estate or let, let's back up? Why did you, why do you think this is so important? Like why oh. real estate, why rentals? 
Yeah, well, you know, I, I think when, like, I remember one of the, actually the family day at the at the fire department, and you have all these different people coming to talk to you, and I'm sure um, your group goes in and talks to the new rookies, and, you know, mm-hmm. there's the, we have the benefits and welfare and the ba- the pipes and drums and all these groups coming to talk to you, but there wasn't, so you're given, I guess the point is you're given a, a big opportunity, especially in California to, with a lot of money and a really good job with time off, but no one really tells you what to do with that and how to manage it. So you see two people, you see the people who become, uh, you know, indebted to the fire service because they have to work 20 overtimes because they're blew it and they bought all this stuff. Or you see the other side who people are financially responsible. And I kind of grew up in that conservative, you know, if you don't have cash to buy it, you can't afford it. So, um, you know, I, I just saw that that was, um, a little bit more important. And because, you know, you talk about the fire, uh, the firehouse table where, you know, all problems are solved. Like there was a time where I actually lost quite a bit of money because of just being stupid. Someone's like, Oh, put your money on this underwater, uh, mining company stock. And I'm just making that up, but whatever it was. And, um, I finally realized that I don't want to rely on just speculation. I want to go out and actually, if it's going to be lost, it's going to be from, from something that I'm doing. And so I just didn't hear a lot of people having these big ups and downs in real estate world. So um, I just kind of jumped in and I, I hit the ground running from that point forward. And it's been absolutely amazing for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's definitely those two groups of guys, right? The guys that get off probation and they're buying motorcycles and four Mm -hmm. by fours and fifth wheels and they're at the desert and they're just literally, you know, that's where their extra money is going and they have to work all the overtime to, to you know, to, to pay for all of it. And then yep. you have the other side. And it, it's a very clear divide. I was oh, yeah. clearly on the other side. Like, I wasn't buying toys. I was buying, you know, duplexes in Indianapolis when I was just off probation. And people were looking at me like, what What are you doing? Like, yeah. why would you do that, you know? But in the end, it, it's very clear why you did it, right? Because you, yeah. you're not getting... You're not you're not getting the benefits in the first couple of years. Mm-hmm. Usually, you know, you're waiting till you start to get the real benefits from it. And I think um, people see that, right? The, the, there was guys at our department who were investing in real estate for long term, and you all you had to do is look at their situation and go, "Yeah, they did it right." Oh yeah. What are they doing? And I'm just going to kind of fall in line and, and get behind them too. But it takes discipline. It takes you know delayed gratification, mm-hmm. which can be tough when you're young and you know you're got this awesome job and you're having all this fun. Um, what do you, what do you find your conversations are like with those guys, the guys that are just stacking up on revolving debt and working yeah. a bunch of overtime to keep it all. What, what does that conversation look like? It, it was, it was kind of the same conversation I probably had m- with myself when I first started. And it, that conversation was, it just seemed risky, you know, like, I can't believe you're doing that. I mean, I'm, I, 99% of my real estate is all out of, out of California in places I've never even been to, never even seen. I, th- I think out of all the houses I've, I've only seen two of them, like actually only on the outside, I haven't even been in them. And so you get that, man, this is the riskiest thing. I can't believe you're doing that. And you know, the, 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 the conversation that I have with them and it's, this was something that was asked to or told me, uh, or told to me, um, was, um, and again, I'm not, I don't want this to think people to think this is the only way, but, um, uh, you know, we have deferred comp at our department, which is a, a very nice thing on top of the pensions we have. But every month I was dumping money into that, not really knowing what I was doing the day one, like I talked about at the fire Academy, I looked down that list and just signed up for the, the most, ex, uh, the one that gave the best rate of return. It was a set it and forget it. And, I didn't know, I didn't truthfully know how it was doing. And so I, that's the, that's the, the very first question I asked them. I said, what do you invest in your deferred comp? And they, it is literally crickets. They're like, I don't know. I go, well, how much do you make? I don't know. I go, uh, you know, we had a little stock market correction two days ago. I go, how much do you think you lost two days ago? And they said, I don't know. I said, to me, that is more risky, right? I mean, you could do really well in that if you know what you're doing, but I, I just don't, and then I don't really care for it. And so I guess the point is I, I like, I try to mitigate the risk by saying, Hey, look, I know exactly to the penny what's coming into my bank account per month from all my rentals and the appreciation and the principal and uh, how much equity I have and all that, because now I'm so type a, which most firefighters are, I 
like that's that's me. I know it. I I just didn't want to be out of control. Um, and that's that's uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. The the other thing I love about real estate, and by the way, I I so I invested a lot out of state. I don't. I no longer do it. Well, I guess that's not true. I just did a short term rental in Idaho, but um, I no longer invest long term out of state. Mm-hmm. And we can beat that up too if you want. But um, I made a lot of bad. Sh- I made a lot of bad buying decisions in the beginning, right? Like I bought some properties that I would never ever yeah. think of buying today. Um, but guess what? It all worked out because as long as you hang on to them, yep. real estate's very forgiving. You know, time heals a lot of things. You know, equity goes up usually. You know, principal goes down almost every time you make that payment. So. I equate that to, you know, there, there's definitely fads that go through the fire service, like this hot stock everybody's mm-hmm. talking about or this thing. But you can get hurt in a lot of those things. And you can get hurt in real estate, too. But if you're conservative and you just hang on to it, mm-hmm. it's it's very forgiving, which is um, a good thing when you're, you know, make some decisions that maybe weren't the best decisions, which every yeah. real estate investor does in the beginning. Yeah, You always are. Someone's going to buy a bad property. There's just no way yeah. around it. Half the, it's, it's half the time. That's how you learn. Um, yeah, I like watching your social, I've seen you on social media a few times. You, you take like tours, you take guys out and go into these other states and yeah, show so, real estate or what's that look like? Yeah. So the last one where there was a bunch of other firemen guys, actually I think four other guys that I got hired with that are doing similar stuff. And, um, you know, I, I gotta keep this on the hush hush, but we use it as a, as a, uh, a, a trip to, to go you know, a shareholder trip. And so don't just don't tell the wives is what I'm trying to say. No, I'm just, I'm <laughs> kidding. But no, we, we had a chance. The guys went out there to St. Louis. We checked out a bunch of our properties. We went to a, a Cardinals game. Um, but yeah, you did say something interesting. I want to touch on too is, is, um, uh, you know, like one thing I always did was I would talk to, uh, the, the captains or the chiefs or whoever that were nearing retirement. Cause I think there's a lot of value in getting, and it could be about anything how to be a better husband, a better dad, how to be a better captain, any, anything. But one mm-hmm. thing that was mm-hmm. consistent was I always like to dig in, like, how, how are your finances doing? And they would say, Oh my gosh, my deferred comp took a, took a massive crash recently. And, you know, I didn't realize that I would have to pay taxes on this and that. And so that, that to me kept being a red flag for people, um, that came up. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's funny you say that. So there's a there there's a captain at our department. Jeff Weens was his name, and I tried to get him to come on the podcast, and he was just so humble that he wouldn't come on. Mm-hmm. Didn't think he was in had anything. Uh, maybe I'm par- putting words in his mouth. Didn't really think he had any authority to talk about the things that I wanted to talk about, which was finance and how are you doing it. He's the guy at the department that he went all in on. He, he would like zone in on a particular thing. And, you know, lately it was all electric cars and anything to do with AI and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And for years, that was his thing. And he studied it. He became an expert on it just from his own research. And then he put his money where his mouth is and he invested in it. And he did really well. And he did that several different times throughout his career. It wasn't always AI. Obviously, years ago, it was different stuff. But he was a perfect example of that guy in the fire department who like, Delayed gratification, became an expert in something just through his own sheer will and, and research and educating himself. And then he stuck with a strategy, right? He yep. didn't like dilute himself all over the place. Those are the guys I see who don't make it. But like, I mean, it's no different than Warren Buffett. Like he doesn't diversify across right. hundreds of mutual funds. He learns something, he sticks to a strategy and he stays with it. And it's the same thing with real estate. But there is, I agree with you, there's a ton to be learned from the guys that are headed out the, you know, the retirement door, the ones that both what to do and what not to, because we've seen plenty of guys who retire with nothing and they're kind of a mess. Yeah. You, 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 you picked up uh, something that I want to just chat about, which is a controversial topic. In fact, I was going to, I want to do an episode on this, but I don't know how well received it would be. So you talked about 457s and obviously the benefit of 457 is there's the, the tax defer deferment. So when you put the money in, you're not getting taxed on it and then you're getting taxed on it when you pull it out down the road. Mm -hmm. Our department doesn't allow Roth 457s, but there is such thing as a Roth 457, which would be better. But do you guys have that where you're at or no? Uh, We don't, we have just the 457s, not, we don't have Roth. We have the same ones that you have. Yeah. So the controversial thing is that, especially for firefighters with that pension, which a lot of people don't get, 
you know, very few companies, if any, have those pensions and even mm-hmm. government workers, the pensions aren't the same for, you know, the public safety folks is the theory being when you pull that money out, you're going to be in a different tax bracket and you're going to save money. Right. But the reality is Mm-mm. the way the pensions work, you're not going to be in a different tax bracket. So what really are you doing? And my argument is your cost. There's a big opportunity lost cost that is lost by heavily investing in your 457. Yeah. Now, if you're going to take that money and go buy a, an RV, terrible decision. But if you're going to take that money instead of putting it in your 457, putting it to work for you in another way, i.e. real estate, then I would argue that that's a better use of that yeah. 457 money than just waiting on it to get retaxed on it when you when you retire at the same income levels. I, what are your thoughts on that? I, I wish this was talked about more, and I think it should be the topic of multiple podcasts because I – and this is, I'm just a very transparent person. I put $0 into mine and I, and I stopped doing that about two years ago. And I did a, I did a one year trial. I'm going to go, I'm going to put none in, but I'm going to invest every dollar that I would be putting in here. And I'm going to put it into real estate. And, and people think it's crazy, but the way I, the way I explain it, it was when you put, let's just make it simple math. If I put in a dollar and my County puts in a dollar, that is a one-to-one match on your money. Um, and they'll match up to 4%. So everyone's like, oh, you're gonna, you're missing out on 4%. So one to one, it's going to grow. Um, it's been, it hasn't been taxed yet, right? When you retire, like you said, I hope I, and I pray that I will be making the most I've ever made when I retire, which is going to put me in the biggest tax bracket, tax bracket. So I'm going to lose 30 to 35% of that probably right out of the gate. And I, and I can't even use it until the government allows me to. So I decided to go and buy real estate. And when you go to, to buy a property, I take that same dollar and a bank gives me a match. And so if I put in 20% and they put 80, that's a one to four match. So I'm not super good at math, but one to four is better than <laughs> one to one. And guess what? My property grows through appreciation, through the principal pay down. At any point in time, I could do a cash out refinance, which is the only place that you could pull out cash uh, tax free money. And you could and once you do that, the tenants is going to take the, uh, the their little cash bottle and they're going to fill it back up for you. And you could do that over and over and over again. Yeah. And, that's well, and let's not forget about the reason people do 457 is they think there's a tax break in it for them in no. the future. Well, I would argue that you invest in that real estate, you're getting your tax break oh, yes. now. Huge. With depreciation and depending on how you structure it, and there's the, the hundred laws yeah. that affect it, but you potentially are getting those tax benefits today. Yeah, which is, you know, W two income is the worst income you can have. You know, it's the highest taxed mm-hmm. income, and if you can yeah. offset that in ways, those are the types of strategies that I think guys should be educated right. on, especially when they come on. And this is a perfect example of that. When that's so funny when I, I didn't know how you were going to react, but. Yeah. In my in my world, the the guy the guys at the department that I would like look up to and, and ch- talk shop with about real estate, almost none of them put into their four fifty seven yeah. for the exact reason that you did because it doesn't make any sense. I, I might be one of the few in my department, which you know that's to each their own. But I also want to I want to have access to to that money when I want it. I don't want to have to wait till they tell me I could use it. And you know, um, you could look daily at the stock market and your deferred comp, and it's like your your deferred comp could be up and then down, up and down. But like back to the real estate thing, it is just one of those the pre drop on a roller coaster, which is tick 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 tick. It's just slowly moving. It's not sexy, but it's yeah. it's uh, it's going up. And uh, the cool thing is, once you pull that money out later, and I could use it tax free to pay for my kids' college, help supplement my retirement, and then the tenants just going to refill the buckets for my kids and their kids and their kids and their kids. Once your 457 is gone, it's gone forever. No, no one's yeah. refilling it for you. So, yeah, the it. legacy. I mean, even I mean, frankly, your pension, like you can set it up to where it takes care of your wife mm-hmm. or like a dependent person, but not much more after that. Right. Yeah. Whereas real estate, like you said, as long as no one as long as your kids or your grandkids don't make a bad move and yeah. sell it all, it's going to be there. Yeah. I mean, quite possibly forever. Thanks for listening. This is Joe from Ventura Fire Foundation. We have an exciting lineup of free webinars for firefighter families in 2024. In November, Tiffany Atala, marriage and family therapist and firewife, 
will speak to the unique challenges of parenting and fire families. The webinars are open to fire families throughout the U.S. and will be held on Zoom. There are limited seats available, though, so register soon. You can register on our website or through the link in the show notes. All of the webinars will be recorded and made available on our website and YouTube channel. Support from Vanguard Charitable made this series possible, and we thank them. Now back to the show. What do you want the guys to know about real estate that they fear or that the things, the objections you get from them about why what you're doing is crazy? If you could straighten them out and just reframe how they look at this stuff, what what would that look like? Yeah, I mean, there there's so much we could talk about, but I think the the important thing is you kind of have to stay hyper-focused in a strategy. There's a million out there. None of them are, um, in my opinion, are wrong. I personally think there's better ones than others. But, you know, you get into social media and you know, one day you want to flip um, RVs. The next day you want to to uh, buy an island. And then you want to go buy RV parks and storage units and VRBOs. And there's so many uh, people pulling at every uh your arms in different directions that you'll never stay hyper focused. And so I guess my thing I could suggest is be the master of one thing first. Doesn't mean you can't go into other things, but get really hyper actively good at one thing. And once mm-hmm. you do that, it's just a rinse and repeat. I mean, the, when, buying my first out of state rental property was probably the scariest thing I ever did. And now it is the easiest thing that I can, it's easier than most because I'm super familiar. I, I'm so type A, I have checklists from, you know, what to talk to the title company about and the lender and the property manager and the tenant and how to uh, look through inspection reports and every little just fine comb detail. And I'm not going to be perfect every time, but those, it's kind of like when you check out your, uh, your BA in the morning, you go out there and you look, you have a certain direction and you certain checklist of things you're doing. That's to keep us safe, right? That's why I think there's so many things in the fire service that correlate to the business world. Um, you know, we're, we train like our life depends on it because it does, but we don't invest like our life depends. And that's kind of one of my mantras, yeah. you know? Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. So I always tell the guys like, look, man, if you had what it t- takes to get hired by the fire department, you 100% have what it takes to invest in real estate, start a business. Mm-hmm. Getting hired at the fire department is difficult. There's all kinds of things you got to oh, do, yeah. all kinds of preparation you have to do. It's years of schooling and work experience and learning how to interview like there's a lot to it and i'm here to say in a lot of ways i think investing in real estate is easier i mean it, it's oh, it doesn't take the same amount of stuff that it takes to get hired by the fire department um let's talk about your business because i understand you own a bit it's not just real estate so what what type of businesses are you in right so i've I've had a few different businesses throughout my time as a as an employee with the county, but I had an Amazon business that's since closed. I had a e bike business which has since closed, and and the reason being is each one of those was a kind of a building block to get where I'm at. Um, I had some failures in them. I had some things that went well, but each time I learned. Just like when you make a mistake in anything, real estate, or you pull in your first hose to a door, you're going to screw up, but you got to you got to take that as kind of like quote unquote tuition and, and, and keep moving. Um, but the current business that I have is I finally was getting asked by so many people on my department and my family and friends, Hey, you know, I, I want to do what you're doing. How do I buy a property out of state? And so I actually started, um, uh, a coaching and one, it's, it's one-on-one coaching slash mentoring, and it's really geared towards first responders to teach them mm-hmm. how to go from zero knowledge all the way up to buying their first rental property out of state. But most importantly, how to set up all the tax structures and um, and the entities that will help you save money on the W-2 taxes that we're getting hammered on in California. So mm-hmm. that that's what I'm doing. I love it. I, I figured out, I love talking about it so much. And what I found is that when people are actually, they buy it, and this is not like some crazy like guru I'm sitting next to a jet. This is like a, a very one-on-one personable, almost like, you know, we'll do one-on-one Zooms. And uh, I like to do the one-on-one because everyone's at their own level and and people have different goals as well. And so mm-hmm. what I find though is when you, when you j- join something like that, you kind of, it kind of forces you to go take action. And, uh, and I really love working with firefighters and nurses and doctors and military because 
they're action takers. They're not going to just going to say it. They're going to go out and do stuff. And I've had a very, very good response from that. And it's kind of cool, like almost like a proud dad watching one of your um, friends slash clients go out and buy their first property and like, hey, this is not that hard, right? But they just need to, they need to get with someone who's done it before. And um, that's kind of what I provide. And I, I love doing it anyway. I just found that I finally had a little bit of value and I was spending so much of my time off, um, you know, away from my wife and kids that I'm like, you know what? I deserve to, to be compensated for this. And it's, uh, it's, it's been great. I've made some good friendships and some good business relationships from it. That's awesome. Um, I, I'd always fascinates me where little business niches come from. Like you, probably didn't think that that wasn't your end goal oh, when no. you started all this. It, it just Absolutely. came about, right? Like Absolutely. you're yeah. like, Oh, there's something here there. I can provide value. I can help people and I can make a little bit of money. That's what I find fascinating with businesses. Yeah. There's people that do business with all kinds of different things. You touched on something that I want to touch on. And sometimes people have a hard time grasping this and interested in your take W2 income, right? Mm-hmm. So like if you're a fireman in Southern California, you're paying tens of, thousands of dollars to the government in in the form of taxes every year without like talking about people's salaries, a lot of money, a a significant portion of your paycheck, the government takes from you. How are you getting those guys to pay less in taxes? What, 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 what are the like high level basic strategies that you are helping people understand? Yeah. So the the very first thing that I want to talk about is that, uh, you know, when, when I, my first meeting with people when I sit down and I talk about their goals, like, Hey, what do you want to do? We'll actually fill out an intake form. And one of the questions, obviously, and I asked it myself is where am I going to get the money for my first down payment? And so I kind of look through their finances and we'll come up with different strategies for that. But, uh, you know, when it comes to paying taxes, you hit it straight, straight on the hammer there. It's like, we're, we're, we pay so much in taxes in California that, in order for us to go and actually save the money in order to to buy our next property year after year, it's very hard. So my strategy is, is once you set up these businesses, you actually save more of what you're already earning as a W-2 income. Um, so like this year, I was able to get enough back from what I already paid into as a fire captain to go and buy another rental property. And I will be able to do that every year. But some of the over the, you know, the, the overhead... Uh, views of what I'm uh, working on with people is, you know, you have to set up uh, an active business because real estate on its own is a passive uh, business. And it's not, there are some good write-offs, but it's not going to go against your W-2 income. So you have to be able to set up an, an active business, usually around three to four properties. You, What I'm teaching people is they could become their own portfolio managers. And, and um, you know, so right now, I'm teaching about how to set up the entities to be able to pay your children, which I do. I pay both of my children. Um, I also, uh, um, you know, we do shareholder trips with the family and we actually go over stuff. My wife's sick of me talking about it, but we talk about the stuff because she's my business partner. Um, We, we do something called the Augusta rule, which I'm sure you've heard of. I know, Mm -hmm. you know, people could look it up or talk to one of us a little bit more about it, but um the gist is I'm not going out and spending more money just in order to save it. I'm actually getting uh, money back on stuff I'm already spending money on. And, gotcha. um, you know, my wife and I go out to dinner. We talk about real estate that goes on the, the, the code three invest business credit card. And this is, this is not like me being a tricky, tricky with the, the, uh, the IRS. This is, these are legit tax benefits of being a business owner. And so, you know, I think that's important because yes, we do get taxed a lot, but, me and you aren't going to be able to to march on uh, the capital and fix it. We we have to come up with the yeah. strategies that exist to be able to to make it work for us. Yeah, there. Yeah, I always go back. There's two. There's two people who get the best tax breaks: the, the person who owns the business and the person who owns the real estate. Mm-hmm. And then, like the the magic formula is if you can figure out how to take your passive losses against your active income, which that's an advanced move. Right? Yeah. Like that's not as easy to do if you're a real estate professional you can do it. And then there's a couple of loopholes too, like yeah. the short term rental yeah. loophole. Oh, yeah. So if, yep. you, if you actively material materially participate in the management of your short term rental, then you can, you can take that loss on paper against your active income, mainly because the government looks at it as an active business and not a passive activity. But 
there the people I know that are the most successful real estate investors who also have you know who also are firemen they don't pay taxes they yeah. just don't there's too much depreciation going around and um, that's the power of real estate that you can legally do that and yeah. these aren't like some Houdini strategy I no. mean this is these aren't popular strategies in a lot of political environments because these are the strategies that the really wealthy people have used oh, yeah. for years and continue to use but they are available to just regular people like you and I. It's just a matter of whether you know about them or not, mm -hmm. whether someone exposed them to you so you know how to take advantage of them. And right. I think what you're doing with your business is helping for sure. Because, yeah. you know, firemen are, and public safety people, they're, they're generally smart, but, the, you know, they're not, that's not where their mind is. They're not trying to figure out how to get ahead financially and make the most, you know, impact for their families financially. They're, they're, salt of the earth, trying to do what's right, help people, you know, be public servants. And I think that there is a, an opportunity for people like you and me to, to help yeah. show the way, you know? Yeah. And one, one thing I do too, with, the, with my clients that I think is, that is helpful too, is, is I provide all the documents. So like if they, you know, they, they want to have an employment contract with their, their family, I provide them that. And it's just to fill in their name yeah. and their entity. I provide the shareholder meeting minutes. Like you go to a union meeting at the fire department and they send out the minutes. Well, we have a minutes thing and all you gotta do is change the dates and change the location. But the things that we're talking about are the same. So it's very organized. We put it in a binder and it, I, I wouldn't say it's hundred percent audit proof, but it's, it is 99.9% because we were acting like a legitimate business because we are a legitimate business. And yeah, hey, so here's one thing I do, which you may or may not do. Uh, so my girl, not all of my, two of my three girls work for me, legitimate jobs. Yeah. They're albeit part-time jobs. And I pay them right up to the limit where they don't have to start paying a bunch of taxes. And then I, we take half their money and throw it in a Roth IRA. That's do you, are you doing that with your boys? I'm not doing it in a Roth, but what I am doing is taking their money and turning it around and buying a, a rental property with it. And that money... So like I kind of have a few houses that are designated for their future. I mean, obviously yeah. everything's going to be for them anyway, but um, I do the very, the exact same thing. And it's uh yeah. Look, look into the Roth yeah. options too, because literally if you do it, you said they're 11. Yeah, they're 11. So like if, if you do it for like till they're 18 or something like you, then you don't ever have to do it again. And they're at the end when they retire, they're going to have a couple million dollars, but it's that getting that jump start because most working people, don't start investing in a Roth IRA until they're what mid twenties, mm -hmm. if they're like super ahead of things. But if you start your kids on that, that is just, it's, it's, it yeah. exponentially sets them yeah, up. I, but, uh, I'm going. I was going to say, I have, I, have, no, I have a good time with them too. Like I, one thing that's lacking, not only in the fire service, but kind of just in the, the parental world is, is the just financial, uh, stuff talking to yep. kids. And so I try, my kids are always around me and you know, I'm talking to people and I try to teach them about what I'm doing. And obviously it's a low level stuff, but um, I got that Robert Kiyosaki's uh, cash flow game for kids. And mm -hmm. it's so much fun. It's like a newer version of Monopoly, but they really, they're really yeah. starting to understand. And so when they go to make a purchase, um, they want to buy something for their, I don't know, Roblox or whatever they're playing on, or I don't even know what they're playing on their mm -hmm. computers, but you know, I, 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 uh, I make, and make them understand about how the interest works and, and whatnot. And they're like, it kind of opens their eyes to it. I think it's something that's so important as a father and a mother to be able to teach your kids that at a young age. Um, um, yeah, and, for sure. Yeah. The schools are terrible. They don't teach that at no, all. They, they don't teach anything about real estate or finances for sure. All they do is give you yeah. a credit card when you turn 18 and said, good luck. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So. Okay. Well, this has been great. Um, anything else you want to share or, or make sure we get out there about all the, about this topic or no, I mean, I'll kind of end it with, um, you know, I, I truly do think that anyone could do this. I'm not, me and you are not special. We just decided to take action. Um, mm -hmm. there is not what I do want to clarify because I get this a lot is people come to me, Hey, Brian, I want to, my wife wants to quit her job. Uh, if we buy two or three rental properties, are we good to go? And I'm like, I think all those gurus online have this false sense of what this is about. You gotta, you gotta get out there and you gotta start hammering this stuff. It is, it is not easy. There's a lot of ups and downs. Um, it is not a get rich quick scheme by any means. Um, but I do think that over the long run, there's going to be stuff that happens like 
major. But if you if you persevere and push on and and take those little lumps and and get better each time, I mean, I never thought that in three years I'd have like we just went under contract with three rentals today, actually. So um, oh, nice. that that makes our twelfth rental property in three years. I would never have imagined that three three years ago when I first started. And you know, I'm we're able to raise private money. Um, I've raised almost a million dollars in private money from people. Um, I'm doing flips. I'm doing burrs. I'm doing long term rentals. We're just it like I'm. It kind of it's a little crazy for me to say that out loud because. I wouldn't have, my, most of my friends would have been like, yeah, right. The first time I did it. But what I, what I'm getting at is I think everyone could do it. Just don't go in there thinking you're going to quit your job right away. And in, in fact, what it's done for me is it made me really, really appreciate the fire service. The fire service is an amazing provider. It gives me, I love the people I work with. I love the job. I love being able to help people. I love being able to spend time off with my family, but most importantly, it, it provides me the permission slip um, to be able to go take these risks a little, and, and go do these things. Because at the end of the day, if that whole cookie crumbles, Brian and his family is still going to be okay because I have a good pension and I've, um, I've done some good things along the way. So you bring up a good point. So what I, what I tell the guys is like, you have the most unbelievable stable income ever, ever. Like in, unless you literally like maim your body and you can't physically do it, which is different. But and you have time off now, arguably, like with all the mandates mm -hmm. and short staff staffing shortages, the time off part is, is, is a little different. But you have the ability to go start a business, go invest in rental properties. And if it all goes south on you, you lose it all. Guess what? You still show up at the yeah. firehouse. You still get your salary. You still take you, it. None of that goes away, which is an incredible competitive advantage that most people yep. do not have. And so in the ability, because um, the reason I go out of state is because of the, the price of the mortgages are so cheap. Like in, in Tennessee, I'm paying $900 for my, uh, the mortgage on my loan. So I don't even want to make that much money that at, at the county, but the county goes and they make me make that $900. And so if my tenant doesn't pay rent or they're late or something happens because of a little brush fire, I'm going to have to do it anyway. They're forcing me to do it. So what am I going to do with yeah. that money? I'm going to put it to work. And that's what yeah. I let me, I want to, you, you, you've, you've brought something up and I just want to share a personal story, a, a mistake, a, an incredible mistake mm -hmm. that I would never, um, that I don't regret making. So, Young at the fire department, started having babies. Wife was a teacher, go figure. Um, wanted to have her stay home, raise the kids. I was like, well, what are we going to do? Like, you got to replace your teacher salary. Started like with the whole down the whole real estate thing. This was really before like bigger pockets like blew up. It wasn't as big as it was. This was in the early 2000s. Um, bought a rental property in the town that I lived. Um, Sold it just by chance, right at the peak, right before uh, the the Great Recession. I think we sold it in two thousand seven or so, um, and then ten thirty one that into. I'm not good with my memory. Maybe twelve units, oh, nice. and in multiple markets mm -hmm. out of state. Excellent concept, good, right? Execution poor, right? So <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many different markets where I didn't really understand each market. And then I was, I was analyzing mainly on spreadsheets. Like I was driving for an outcome. I needed to earn X amount of dollars so my wife could stay home. And I needed these things to cash flow. And I'm looking at the cap rates and the NOI all on paper. Not as much. Well, one, I didn't go any of these places mm -hmm. when I was doing it, which is not that bad, right? right? I mean, we live in the 21st century. But I ended up buying some properties that I would never have bought again today. Anyway, long story short, I took my limited salary and I took my equity and spread it out over all these units all at once. And I, oh, I overextended. It was too much. I had too much out there, too many, too much exposure to maintenance. Then the Great Recession hit and collecting rent was difficult and, you know, all the things that go along with that. But what I was trying to do is keep my wife at home from working and I was going to do it through real estate. And when you said, it's just not that easy, it's not, you, can, you don't go to buy two or three properties and do it. Yeah. You're a hundred percent right. Because even what I did, it didn't work. It, it didn't work for that purpose. Right. It worked. I said, it still got me to where I'm going today and I would never have changed it. 
but that's not uncommon. Guys think how, you know, if I want to do what you're doing, how can I get my wife to stay home or yeah. whatever the, the goal is? And it leads back to real estate is not a get rich quick scheme. You know, it's a get rich quick, slowly right. scheme. I, I would say it's kind of a 10 year plan. Like, um, and I, and I do think data and spreadsheets are important because it takes the emotion out of buying. Like, you're, you're like I don't like mm-hmm. that granite. Well, you know what? The, you don't need to like the granite there. The tenant needs to like it, but it has to make sense on paper and math. But just because there's something on paper, that that again is kind of our permission to do it. But it's right around the the you know the ten year mark is where it it gets nice. And I know then I'm sure you you understand the the different pillars of real estate. But for those that don't, I can do just a quick explanation. You have the sure yeah go you for the, it. Yeah, you know the, the principal getting paid down monthly um, by the tenant that. That doesn't go necessarily in your pocket to go, Brian can't go spend that today, but that's something that later when you refi or sell, that becomes equity for you. Um, you have cash flow, which is always nice. Um, you have, um, you know, you have the, the tax benefits and then you have appreciation. So the cool thing about that versus the stock market, if the stock market goes down, it's down. If it's up, it's up. And if you have, I call them four pillars, because if one of those gets de- knocked down, you still have one to stand on. So if a tenant moves out and they're not paying, well, unfortunately, you're not getting principal pay down and you're not getting cash flow, but you are getting uh, tax benefits and appreciation still. Let's say the market's flat and the appreciation is not going up that well, but you have a tenant. Now you're still getting um, principal pay down, tax benefits and um, cash flow. So there's always some, you're always winning in one way. And that's what I like about it. So. I know that's a little bit of a little much, but it's I'm t- kind of darking out on uh, the stuff. But well, it, I, I'll go as far as say even when you're losing, you're still winning. Right. So in my particular case, I had because I went into a bunch of different markets, I dealt with a bunch of different property management companies, and I don't like property management companies. It's really hard to find a good oh, one, really and when hard. you find a good one, they don't always stay good. But it's what got me into property management because I was so sick of dealing yep. with bad ones. I was like, uh, I'm going to do this myself which is what I do here where I live now, which got me, you know, opened up a whole nother set of doors for us. So you never know where, even you go get beat up and make some mistakes, you don't know where where that's going to lead. The important thing is that you keep your eyes open and you learn from it and you don't go repeat the same mistake over again. Exactly. Yeah. And then you just got to ride the coattails of people that are doing it. And I highly recommend anyone interested in, in doing this stuff, reach out, join Facebook groups, read a bunch. There's so much good, yeah. so many good, um, podcasts. I, I, I go to the gym. This is so stupid. I call it lifting and learning, but I listen to podcasts and I lift at the same time. Yeah. Um, I, I list, I have a long drive to LA County from orange County. And so I listen to podcasts. I read books. There's a lot of downtime, um, at the fire service outside of business hours where people are vegging and watching their 20th episode of, uh, Seinfeld when they could be educating themselves and becoming better. And at that point, you're already at work. You might as well take that time and do it. So um, yeah. and I don't want to be that guy that's always hiding out somewhere. That I, You kind of have to have that intermix between being with the guys and girls, and but also doing what's good for you and and uh, and pushing yourself to be a better a better person and a better provider, really. So. Yeah. Well, Brian, I love what you're doing. I think you're setting a great example for the guys. You're you're obviously crushing it for your family. You're teaching your kids about this stuff. I think it's I think you're doing a great thing. So if our listeners go, I want to do what Brian's doing and I want him to teach me what's how do they do it? What's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, there I have a website. It's uh www.code3invest.com and that's the number three. Um kind of had to stay within the fire service stuff for that. <laughs> um and then, yeah, I have some social media. I don't know if, like, you want me to say it or you can put we'll, it. In we'll, we'll put the links yeah, in. Put in the yeah, show notes. Joe, Joe will grab it for and, me. Uh, yeah, yeah, reach out. I'd love to talk about it. Whether or not, I mean, I'm not pitching myself. Just, I love talking about it. I talk to people all the time from other departments. And even if you're not in the fire service, um, please reach out. I, you know, like I said, my wife doesn't want to talk to me about it. So I might as well uh, <laughs> talk to some random strangers all day about it. And, uh, you know, and the, th- the cool thing about that is I learn from every time I talk to someone like yourself or other people, I learn. And so you got to reach out. Um, just get out there. There's so many, and there's so many different ways to make money in real estate. Yeah. And it's not always just mm-hmm. owning the asset. Like the, the best thing I think is owning the asset. The second best thing is controlling the asset. And that's, what a property management company does or a contractor does when they're working on projects. So there's, there's so many ways to, to do this 
business. And I, I, I am passionate about opening people's eyes and yeah. showing them like, Hey, anybody can do this. This is not difficult, but anyhow, I don't want to go down another rabbit yeah. hole, but Brian, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you being open and sharing and, I think you have a lot to offer and I'm, I'm stoked that you're doing what you're yeah, doing. I honestly, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, you know, I love the concept of the round table. I think, uh, I think there's a lot that could be solved there. And so let's, uh, let's keep that conversation going, everyone. And uh, appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Pleasure is all ours. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that little chat I had with Brian. Um, Definitely kind of geeked out on real estate and taxes and maybe not everybody's number one topic, but I truly believe that if you if you start investing in real estate, that it it pays dividends and it can really set your family up for success in the long run. Uh, a couple little housekeeping things. So the foundation is has a new partnership uh, regarding donating vehicles. So if you have a old car that you don't think you can sell for much and you just want to get rid of it reach out to us. You can go on our website, VenturaFireFoundation.org. It's extremely easy. We take care of everything for you. You get a nice tax break. And then once they dispose of the car, we get a nice donation. So it's a win-win for everybody. It can be anything with a title. So whether it's a boat, a plane, a car, a train, who knows? Um, We'd be honored if you kept us in mind the next time something like that happened. Thank you for your time. Appreciate everybody listening. And until next time. (laughs) 